let's see here. Can I make this 20 minutes? Oh, wait, here we go. Start off hot right away, folks. Hello, folks, where I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. As you know, this is a wrestling show because I have my Young Buck shirt on, the one I got last week. I'm so happy to wear it. Actually, it's really comfy. has a little bit of pop of color. Good stuff. And you know, because it's a Young Buck shirt, I'm here to talk about all elite wrestling. So let's get the show started. I have to hobo, do my work, and getting some sleep would be nice. Yeah, getting sleep is like the bonus. So I have like two tests to take. The cat goes to the vet. Jeez, tomorrow's going to suck. But that's okay. I didn't have to check my, my, my cell phone. It was like going off for a while. So let's see here. Let's talk about Be Elite. Be, be Elite. So it was the Elite, which is the Young Box and Kenny Omega, along with, well, Hangman Adam Page is not Elite, but Hangman Adam Page is there. And say, yeah, FTR taking on. The Dark Order. And this actually, this was a 12-man tag. And wow, was this card ever tag heavy. And then next week is going to be a tribute to tag team. So it's probably going to be nothing but tag team wrestling. That could be really good. Could be really long. We'll see what happens. Let's get to this match. The one thing I do like about this match, this match had very controlled chaos in it. Um, there were 12 men, but it wasn't Tornado, so you actually had to tag it in and out. They allowed the 10 seconds or something, or something. who knows. They allowed like 50, like 50 seconds, who knows. But it felt like, with it, it was, for the most part, it was controlled, which is a lot different than that chaos was last week. Again, AEW, they learn. They learn from their mistakes. That's good to see. They're, they're constantly evolving. They're changing as to what like feedback comes. This was good. Do more. They do more of that. This was not good. They do less of that. They're, um, they're not necessarily listening on who, and they're not taking booking ideas from people like me. But that's that's probably good. But again, they they say, "Whoa, n no one liked this stuff we did." Maybe we shouldn't do it. Again, they pulled the trigger way too quick on a couple of things, but I'll let them. See. We'll see what happens. Um, so it's controlled chaos, and they followed the tag team rules for now. And actually, they did it for the most part throughout the match. Uh, Page and Omega they do tag team chain wrestling. The one thing the tag teams are really like the the Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, the original D Dark Order. Um, Paige and Omega, the Young Bucks, they really, when you have coherent tag teams in this match, they really focused on their tag team moves, which is really good to see. Um, again, Paige and Omega, amazing tag team chain wrestling. Uh, FTR eventually saves Paige and Omega, because then, of course, the Dark Warriors has to get in there to save their own. Um, there was the four-on-three sup suplex, which was pretty good. Cole Cabana made the save. Dark Cabana. He should be known as now. Uh, see, and Stu and Uno, they do, they do double team. Classic ring cut off on Kenny Omega. And something happened to... Oh, I forget his name now. But one of the FTR's knees or something got, had to get walked out. That, that's just a work. That's... Yeah, because Paige eventually comes back. Page goes with him. We're out of page. Once you hear the announcer say, We're out of page. Oh, yeah, it's a work. Uh, so then it was a six on three. A Cole Cabana hit the Superman splash. Uh, then Uno came in to try and f finish him off. Um, there was the ref assisted, <laughs> the ref assisted neck breaker. And what I mean by that, the one buck, uh, Matt Jackson went to kick Uno. So Uno caught the kick, passed the kick off to the referee. Referee's like, like held it like, what the heck? It was confusing. Then Uno hit a neck breaker. Very Shikara-ish spot. Yeah, that's, that's good to see. We're, one day we're going to see Hollow Wicked and Delirious show up too. 
Well, I think Delirious is actually one of the bookers in Ring of Honor, I think. Or he used to be. He used to be a booker somewhere. Or for Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Um, Stu, can he got his cheap shot in again, bounce off the ropes. Matt Jackson, no one's stay here, and then Stu kicked him in the back for his efforts. So that was good. That was the... Matt did try his comeback, a little blockbuster on Stu. Um, Nick got off something. And then Paige returns! He just didn't abandon Kenny Omega, which is good to see. Um, then it's Paige and Lee in the ring. The yay boos lay with the the forearm. They both, I think, hit forearms. Um, then went to the outside, and Lee hit... Brody Lee hit that dive. That's a one big boy. Flying through the air. Uh, Colt recovers. Then she makes a tag, hits the Chicago skyline. Um, Kenny makes Kenny comes in, makes a save. Then we have ourselves a super kick party. Yeah, there we go. Super kick party. Because hey, it's the Young Bucks. And there's a Snapdragon super kick plex, which was good to see. However, Paige eat, ate a nasty discus clothesline. Paige takes. Paige eats the pin. The Dark Order, ooh, they actually win. Cole Cabana celebrating. You know, this was actually pretty fun. For the most part, it was organized. We didn't get to see enough of the revival, though. It was a good cheeseburger match. And the best friend showed up in Trent's, Trent's mom's minivan. Um, and Moxley hit a promo. So, whoa. Moxley's a little violent there, buddy. And then with Santana and Ortiz. Oh, no. I don't want to join this. Cancel. Um, hit the wrong button. Lean the book against the screen too hard. Santana Ortiz taking on the best friends. Um, classic start. The headlocks. His head scissors. The reverse hole and pin. Actually, it's kind of nice to see that they still do wrestling moves. Um, in a wrestling match, you just don't do striking. Yes, being strike heavy. On occasion, if that's what you're known for, that's good. But just all the time. So I do like the fact that they mix it up a little bit. And they actually mix up the starts a little bit, as we've seen throughout these matches. In that, that 12 man tag, strike heavy a little bit. This is a little bit more wrestling. Um, the next match, I got a little bit different start to it. But that's good, though. It's a classic wrestling match start. They just kind of mix things up a little bit. Good to see. Uh, Trent hit the Northern Lights suplex, which always looks amazing. Uh, there was some, some tag team work by both. The best friends. <laughs> Eventually, they have to hug it out. In the middle of the ring. Uh, they work over Santana a little bit. Ortiz gets in. Single leg crab. For some reason, Trent's the one who says, yeah, I'll be the one who gets beat up. Man, Trent gets beat up a lot. Of course, Chuck T is known for the invisible hand grenade, too. Or is sometimes known as the invisible bug mom. When it was the best friends versus the colony in Chikara. That was actually kind of funny. And, of course, Drew Gulak was Soldier Ant. And I did that too quickly, and it screwed up my camera. So... Yeah, this will be an interesting little hag time. Um, he, of course, ate the grenade for his first team. Let's see if I can get this done as quickly as possible now. Uh, again, best friends, they get beat up for most of the match. Santana and Ortiz. And they just work over Trent so much. Why Trent, though? He doesn't deserve it. Um, Chuck T finally gets in. He gets the hot tag. Gets the soul food. The Falcon Arrow, there was a Tower of Doom spot. There was the Slingshot Scissors Cutter, which was good. To a set out Power Bomb, which is always fun to see. But then Trent won by roll up. A roll up in this quality match? That's okay. I can take that. Still, it was actually a good, fun match. It was a cheeseburger match.
and MJF had a pro was doing a promo in the back. Ah, uh, we'll see. He's so good at talking. I'm a little wavery when it comes to this whole presidential thing going on. WWE's done it so often, I think it just kind of bores me. Again, it was the Bo Leave. Um, oh, what's his face? Did it? Cross face chicken wing. When it was make. Not Shelton Benjamin, great. Maybe it was make Shelton Benjamin. No, it was the other guy. I forget who. But, um,. Ray, no. Bob Backlund, that's it. I knew it would come to me sooner if I if I thought hard enough about it. Bob Backlund. He did that. So yeah, uh, Matt Hardy cuts a promo, Sammy Guevara. I know you're there, Sammy Guevara. Uh, Santana and Tucson destroy the minivan. They tag it. Um... With spray paint and like take baseball bats and sledgehammers and the and the mad ball mad sock to it whatever that is that was okay then we have Dark Order Part Two we had um Silver and what's his face taking on Matt Cardona a Jack Daddy Matt Cardona boy. He put on, like, the Muscle 15, not the Corona 30, like everyone else did. Um, he was doing some laps in this pool. Or he was doing some laps with Chelsea Green. But, um, and then Cody, and Cody was there. Cody, even Cody looks small compared to Matt Cardona. And both the guys from the Dark Order, um, Silver and What's-His-Face, Look, look small compared to him. Um, Cody starts off by shooting a single leg takedown. Cody. Oh, I, I love it when people do amateur wrestling moves. Does this match get weird at the end? No, I'm going to bump. I'm going to bump this up, I think. Just because that single leg. Then he hit the delayed vertical suplex. A Cordoni did a great looking flapjack. Uh, then the, the Dark Order guys, they, they, oh wait, before that, Cody and Matt do the classic tag team. I think Cardona stretches out his arms. Cody comes off the top rope. The double axe handle shot. Oh, yes, folks. Nostalgia is such a drug. It's so good to see old school moves. Um, Cody then eventually eats the apron, gets gets beat up a lot. This is where it kind of gets sloppy a little bit. Um, there's a toss knee lift. Whoa, that looked actually pretty good. Then the yes kicks. Uh, Cardona gets back in the the, the hot tag. Uh, the one guy from the Dark Order hits the sit-out Tiger Bomb. Oh, oh, no, actually Cardona hit the sit-out Tiger Bomb. That's impressive. Now the, again, the chain wrestling by the Dark Order was really good. The really fast pace. Eventually, Matt Cardona hit the radio silence, which is the Rough Rider. Uh, Matt Cardona and, and Cody Rhodes wins. And just to be true to my word, because Cody Rhodes did an amateur wrestling move, this is a surf and turf match. Let's see, Ooh, I could get this done. Last page of notes. Oh, it's always good. Uh, Sammy Vera came out for the super debate. Um, then we saw Eric Bischoff. Wow, I think it has been 20 years since he's been on TNT. And they did reference that. They referenced like the exact months and everything. Um, so he narrates the debate between Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy. Uh, when it came to the wrestling, Chris Jericho, of course, just... just belittled Orange Cassidy when it came to like the one serious question about um, the ice caps melting and the ocean waters rising. Chris Jericho says, that's nothing to do with pro wrestling. That's a stupid question. And Orange Cassidy gave right one of the, more, the most articulate answers about sea level rising I've heard in a while. And I'm in Daytona Beach. Eventually, probably like 
not during my lifespan, but eventually Deltona is going to become, which is a couple more towns inland, about 20 miles or so inland. Um, eventually Deltona is going to become waterfront property. And right now where I'm sitting is going to be inhabited by fish and corals, probably some crabs and maybe a shark or two. Uh, of course, it all breaks down at the end. Chris Jericho nails the Judas effect on Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy looks dead. Um, then Britt Baker says, Big Swole, I know who you're going to fight. You're going to fight Reba. And Reba's like, what? I've never been in a wrestling ring. Listen, the hardest thing to do, I th my opinion, and there's a lot of hard stuff, the hardest thing to do as a pro wrestler, I think, is to f to try like you forgot how to be a pro wrestler because you're s there's something with the muscle memory. And once your muscle memory, once you throw your muscle memory off, it, it gets all wonky. But it was Reba versus Big Swall. Big Swall starts off by beating up poor Reba. Uh, Reba actually, like, threw Big Swall into the turnbuckle and realized, hey, I can, I can, I can throw her head against the turnbuckle. Yes, I did a wrestling move. <laughs> and I just wanted to do that again. Uh, she just bounced poor Big Swall's head off the mat. She went to climb up the top rope. She had... Almost the same exact reaction I had when I went to the top rope. When I climbed up to the top rope, I just kind of looked down and said, here we go. Please, God, save me. I probably should have done what Reba did. And she got up to the top rope and said, this is a long way down. But then she went to the second rope and did a second rope moonsault again. Congratulations, Reba. Once you hit the moon salt, I mean everything else is, is is easy after that. But however, Big Swole got out of the way, as did my friend. But Big Swole did not do it as fast, nor did she move as far as my friend did, because he saw his life flash before his eyes as I came down, and I'm just like, oh, I did it, and then what is that? Whap. Flat on the mat. That was interesting, though. Everyone's eyes kind of opened up. It's like, whoa, that fat piece of crap could do a moonsault. We're going to do moonsaults forever now. But uh, then Big Swole hit whatever. I forget what he calls it. Jerry dancing, whatever. Big Swole wins. She's going to take on Britt Baker eventually. This was, oh, I'll tell you what, oh, seeing Reva's reaction. Again, made me nostalgic. It wasn't that good of a match. It's still a ham sandwich of a match. And then we get to our main event of the evening. We have John Moxley taking on Darby Allen. I don't know what John Moxley was drinking, but. Unlike me, who was a responsible human being, and I actually pick up the aluminum from those disgusting people because, well, it's a commodity and it's money. He threw whatever can he had, like, on the ground. You can see him, like, toss something. Silver can, I don't know if it was a beer, energy drink, or soda. Doesn't matter. It's still precious aluminum. Oh, wow, did I get... Oh, yeah, I think I finally fixed the timing issues on my camera. Came naturally, I guess. Eventually picked up. Um, Moxie just dropped Darby with one punch, busted Darby Allen open. There was a lot of blood in this match. There was a lot of blood on this TV show, period. Swills got busted open. Oh, Matt Hardy got busted open the hard way. And freaking Sammy Guevara threw a chair at his head. Whoa. A little unscripted blood. Um, yeah, Sammy Guevara is going to be going to wrestle in court for that. Um, in this match, John Moxley punched Darby Allen in the face. I think that was more of a blood capsule, because that, like, came right away. He got trapped with a one punch. Uh, Darby did, uh, John Moxley just 
pummeling poor Darby Allen. Darby Allen looks like, looks like such a manlet compared to John Moxley. It'll be interesting to hear what the comparisons that uh, Cornette says on his show, because they they might not be good. Uh, I think someone said in um, Discord, uh, Darby Allen had on a paper cut out of John Moxley's face. They said, "Hey, no, that's actually um, Marco Stunt in disguise." <laughs> the two of them have pretty similar body types. Marco Stunt's pretty small. Darby Allen's a little bit bigger, not by much though. He's just taller. I'll tell you what, Darby Allen's skinny. I, I've never figured out how skinny people can take the bumps they do and just not break themselves. At least I have a little, at least I have a little cushion when I fall. But he doesn't. Yeah, neither does Britt Baker. Like, my fear is one of those days they're going to hit something, they're going to like break a hip or something. So there's, there's nothing to cushion the blow. And that's not necessarily... They're not even muscle to cushion the blow. Like, see... Britt Baker is just skinny. She doesn't have... The only reason you can see Britt Baker's abs is because there's, there's like zero fat covering it up. I think Darby Allen's the same way. Like, at least Marco Stunt has like... He has... Um, He's that skinny fat guy. Where where yeah, he has he's he's small, but he has a gut though. But it's just that his gut is so uh, the gut's so small, he's so small, you would never know unless he takes the shirt off. But enough about that. Um Moxley eventually works over Darby. Um uh, when Darby gets up speed, he gets the better of John Moxley. Darby had a Lucha destroy. Wardlow comes out. He's a distraction to the referee. And MJF comes out and nails John Moxley with the belt. Busts John Moxley open. Um, eventually, he gets the coffin dropped. Because Darby Allen wants to take advantage of it. Moxley kicks out of that. Moxley hit a gotch pile driver, Suzuki's move. I think this is like a knock on, on Minoru Suzuki. John Moxley hopes he better never go back to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Because Darby Allen kicked out of a gosh pile driver. He kicked out of the finisher of Minoru Suzuki. And John Moxley allowed him to do that. That's not a smart idea there, Mr. Moxley. But then he went for the paradigm shift. Yep, that and it, this was actually really good. This is another surf and turf match. Ironically, ironically, it was only the second singles match on the whole show. So overall, I'll say AEW learned its lesson. Bravo. It was a surf and turf AEW. Well, that's it for me, folks. Um, I'm going to go off and find that piece of aluminum that Moxley threw away. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm off tomorrow, so I'll see everyone.